pray right now, Father God, that your word that has already been planted in me, Father God, will come flowing out, Father God, the way that you want it to be when it comes to your people, that you will open up their hearts and their mind to receive exactly what is being spoken today, Father God. We ask that your word penetrate us so deeply, Father God, that we will understand that we cannot take your word lightly. And Father God, that we will take your word and use it, Father God, in every situation that we're dealing with, Father God. And we just ask that right now, that Father God, that you just remove anything and everything out of all of us that is not of you. Yes. If that spirit of distraction, of worry, to distress, whatever the case may be, may be in us right now. We ask in the name of Jesus that it flees right now. Yes. Because, Lord Jesus, we ask that your presence be known today. We ask that, Lord Jesus, that you bring up a new thing in us today, Father God. We ask that your word will manifest so deeply that we will rejoice, that we will not leave this place the way that we came in. Father God, we will have been speaking your word over and over and over again. But, Father God, today we will receive it. Today we will glorify you. Today we will praise you. We will, you. we will thank you because of who you are. We are here for a reason. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you for this word today. And I ask you to remove me now. Remove me. Remove me. And allow me to be sitting down as a student as you teach. Because I need to receive this just as much as anybody else. And we thank you, Lord, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, I know usually when y'all see Pastor Joe get up here, we have the clips and we have the cartoons or we have the little fun stuff. So today, I'm just going straight to the Word. We're just going to hit the Word. We're going to receive the Word. And then we're going to do our communion. We're going to do what just God says, and we'll be done. Amen. God's Word. This is, this is about God's Word today. Everybody turn, and I'm reading out the New Living Translation, but everybody turn to 1 Peter chapter 5. Now, as I was praying this week, and I was just like, okay, God, you need to prepare. You know who's going to be at church. You know who I'm going to be dealing with throughout this week. You know what type of spirits. You know what type of believers, unbelievers. You know everything that I'm going to be dealing with, who I'm going to be facing. So, I need you to uh, keep me two steps ahead of everything, so I can just know what to speak, what to do, what to go through. What I, because I, I always say it's always great to actually. It's one thing to receive the word and then have it for yourself, but it's another to take the word and put it into action, so you can have an experience to know how powerful this word is. See, a lot of us got the word in us, but we have not exercised the word enough to know what it will do in your life. Say that again. A lot of us has the word of God planted in us. But we do not get up to put the exercise of it into practice. Exercising it every day. Practicing it. Even if you do fail, practicing it. At least give it attempting, trying to see if it actually works or not. See, what has happened is that a lot of us said... It works, and they believe it works because they seen their brother and sister go through it. And they're like, oh yeah, it does work. God sees whatever, but they have not had that personal encounter. They have not had that personal one-on-one. -on -one. They have not had that, you know what? I've been through this same situation just like you, and this is what God has done for me, and this is what God has done for me. And they shared it, and they put it together so they can go out there and do what God has called them to do to the lost, as well as helping a brother and sister. So this word, I truly believe this word, like I said, it was just, as I was just, um, praying it and asking God to help me with this, I said, God, this word seems the same to me from what I've been preaching and what I've been talking about. I've been talking about remembering who you are. I've been talking about call of repentance, giving instructions on what we're supposed to do in the midst of being blessed and enduring. Talked about how it's important to seek God's face. How it's important to humble yourself. How important to pray. How important, how important it is to turn from your weak ways. Then God will hear your request. Heal your land. And also forgive you. I've been talking about this for the last two months. And I'm like, okay, God. I need you to show me something else. I said, 
so what is it? What is it that I got to speak to the people? He said, you will be dealing with character and costly obedience. He said, either the character is out of line on what the way that I said it's supposed to be, or some is at a point of costly obedience. What they have to understand is, how much are you willing to sacrifice what you have for me? Costly. When I say costly, I have to ask God, and I'm like, God, you got to go deeper into that. And he showed me two stories. He showed me Abraham, and he showed me Ezekiel. Show me in Abraham how God called him to sacrifice his son. Now all of us know the story. God, the father, Abraham, you have to sacrifice. You have to do this. Abraham got up, got his son, went to go sacrifice his son. Ezekiel, the same thing. Told him what was going to happen to his wife and what's supposed to take place afterwards. How he's not supposed to receive it, not, to, not mourn and not cry and don't do anything. He just understands because it's an illustration. Both of these men of God had something that was dear to them. Understand that. Your child, your spouse. And the father said, give them to me. They're about to die. And both of these men accepted the word of God. Without question. The key thing is that God is asking us to or, or costly obedience in certain situations and we question it. And we don't supposed to question it. We're supposed to know who God is. Believe in God. Trust in God. And just say, God, if you say it, so be it. And just do it. Going a little further, but you're going to see how this is all, all tied in. First Peter chapter 5. And I'm going to read from verse 6 to 11. Now when you get a chance, everybody, I, I advise you to read this whole chapter. It's awesome. God is totally speaking, but I want God to give me the assignment to speak from verse 6 to 11. So here it is. The word of God says, So, it says, So humble yourself under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, He will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for the great enemy, the devil. He plows around, around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that, here it is right here. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. Yes. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. Here it is. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and He will place you on a firm foundation. All power to Him forever. Amen. Alright. Here we go. Once again, as we read the Word of God, God is given instructions. He gives you instructions on what we're supposed to do, how are we supposed to do it? And then he lets you know in the midst of what's going to take place because the enemy is going to try to come and steal what is being placed in you. But in the midst of why you're going in it, you have to have faith in him. Yes. And then after you have endured, after you have gone through the testing, after you have faced the devourer, the enemy, the one that is plowing, because it may not be you, but it may be somebody that's close to you that the enemy is going to try to use to destroy you. Why should we go into this? First, the word of God says, so humble yourself under the mighty power. Mighty power of God. And at the right time, 
He will lift you up in honor. Somebody in here, tell me, who can defeat God? Can anybody in here defeat God? Can the, can the enemy, can the devil defeat God? Are you sure about that? You're positive about that, right? So if the mighty hand of the one that we are proclaiming can defeat all things, the mighty hand, not your hand, not your pastor's hand. Come on, come on. Not the prophet's hand. Come on. Not your boss's hand. Come on. Not your spouse's hand. God's hand. Yes. yes. Let's get this straight, everybody. All of us need to understand is the mighty hand of God. Yes. We have to recognize through all of our trials and tribulations and issues that the only person that's going to get it, us through it is the mighty hand of God. Yes. Not us. Yes. We cannot get ourselves out of situations because we're too busy putting ourselves into situations. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Make it it says, so humble yourself under. Humble. Humble. Be still. Break it down. Chill down. Calm down. Yes. Stop moving too quick. Slow up. Slow it up. Yes. Chill. Kick back. <laughs> Release and get rid of your pride. Come on. Yes. And just sit there and admit. I am nothing, God, but you are all. I cannot do this, and I'm tired of continuing to try to do this on my own. Remove me out the way of all these situations and allow me to be still to know who you are, Father. Humble, help me to humble myself in your presence. Help me to at least humble myself to even get on my hands and knees to pray to you. We get caught up in so much stuff. And God just says, once again, we're talking about this word, humble. Humble yourself. I love how it says, humble yourself. The word says, yourself. Stop trying to humble everybody else around you and you're not humbling yourself. Come on. Woo! Right there. You want everybody else to be with you. And this and this and God, this and this and that. And you're not taking your own words for yourself. The word of God says, before you can pull the speck out of your brother's eye, pull the log out of your own. Come on. Work on your own. Examine yourself. Deal with yourself. Right. Work on yourself to understand how to be humble before you can teach somebody else to be humble. Right. Ouch. Sorry. <laughs> we all need it. We all fall into this sometimes. We all sometimes are not humble in situations and we go about it the wrong way. But thank God through his mercy and grace, he gives us another opportunity to get it right. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. It says, humble yourself under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up yes. in honor. At the right time, he, at the right time, he, not at the right time, I, not on my time. On his time. And I asked God, I was like, okay, so why, why are you saying like that at the right time? Because sometimes we feel that we're doing so much. We're doing so much. We're serving, we're serving, we're serving. We're out there witnessing. We're doing so much and constantly, month after month, we seem like we're doing so much. Ain't it my time? Ain't it my time? And God says, at the right time, I'll give it to you. You may think you're ready, but I got things on hold for a reason because I'm still trying to teach you something. You may read your word daily. You may pray daily. You may get up and preach daily. This is how it's speaking it to me. Daily. But when was the last time you checked your attitude? When was the last time you checked how you love your people? Come on. When was the last time you checked? If you were actually deceiving people or not. When was the last time you actually examined those areas? So you see, God was like, you have to understand that I want to give you everything that you prayed for. Because it's already manifested and placed on a date when you're going to get it. However, I don't want you to make the same mistake like Adam did. Because Adam had it all. He had it all, and in the midst of having it all, 
he gave it all because of one act of disobedience. But now I'm here because now mercy and grace covers you and I'm giving you the opportunity over and over and over, and over to get it right. Because when I give it to you, I want you to be able to stand firm when these attacks come so you know not to give it to the enemy. Come on, God. Oh. We have to understand that God wants us to have it all. God wants us to have a piece of heaven down here on earth before we go and reconcile with our Lord. He wants us to be able to rejoice. He wants us to have greater than what the world seems like is having better than us right now. He wants us to have it all. But God is so smart and so intelligent that he's not just going to give it to anybody. You have to put in the practice. You have to put in the dedication. You have to put in all the effort. You have to put in the work. And you have to get yourself into a place that you is not about to. And I'm going to sacrifice everything that I can to receive what God has given me so I can do what Christ did. Because it's not for me, but it's to bless his people. See, at the time right now, we're asking for a lot of stuff, but we want it for ourselves. God gives stuff for us to bless others. And in the midst of us blessing others, we will be blessed. Yeah. Not for us to get it for ourselves and to get prideful. Come on. We have to understand all these tools. We have to understand what God is doing. So as it says, it says that at the right time, He, which is God, will um, lift you up in honor. Here's the instructions once again. It says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. We have to give it all to God. The Apostle Paul says, worry about nothing but pray about everything. We are worrying too much on how we are going to get through these situations daily. And in all reality, that's a sin. Come on. I'm just going to be honest. If God tells us not to worry and we worry, that's going against God's word. Right. That's his period. That's right. right. If you over here worried about what's going to happen to you when it comes to your job, or what's going to happen to you when it comes to these bills, or what's going to happen to these kids, that means you don't have enough trust and belief in the person that you serve is going to get you through it. Right. Yes. Speak it. We cannot operate in that. We have to understand that I don't care what I'm facing today. I don't care what I'm in, in, enduring today. I don't care what I'm dealing with today. I have enough faith and I have enough trust in the God that I serve that even in the midst of all this, this too shall pass. Yes! By the way, I think I the title of this sermon. It was, Hold On, Be Strong. It's only a test. <laughs> Hold on. Be strong. Be strong. It's only a test. This is only a test yes. to see how you're going to operate in the midst of the storm. Are you going to sink? Are you going to be scared to go in? Are you going to turn? Are you going to discourage your brothers and sisters? No. Be strong. Hold on. Be strong. It's only a test. It's a test to see how much faith you have in God. Yes. See, a lot of us use the word of God and we, and we, we, it's, it's crazy how it happens. Like we take the, the scriptures that, well, we got to have faith as small as a mustard seed. Okay. That is true. But God wants us to stretch that faith. Stretch it. So understand this. I'm about to go, we're going to go. Hit this point real quick. No, hit this and we're going we to be done. God says, give your worries. Give your worries and prayers to God before he cares about you. Stay alert and watch out for the great enemy, the devil, who plows around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. When I looked up, when I looked up the word attack, it says, I mean, alert. It says, watchful and prepared for danger, emergencies, or opportunities. Be watchful and prepared. Devour. It says, destroy completely. That's what I'm saying. Destroy completely. The enemy is looking for somebody that he can destroy completely. And I was like, okay, God, so it's funny how you said, stay alert. 
and then the enemy and devour. Stay alert. He said, because we are all considered watchmen. He said, all of us have to watch for the attacks on your family, on your friends, on your co-workers, on your the, the people at school, and those that is even non-believers. Because he's looking for the person that don't know the truth, that don't have enough truth in them, or is not operating in the truth, that he can devour to get a hold of God's children to bring us down. And I was like, well, how can that be, God? Because we all believe it. He said, because if a person lacks in reading the word, a person lacks in praying, a lacks, uh, they lack in fellowship with me and doing anything, the enemy at any given time is going to go and go get them because they are not doing what they're supposed to do daily. That's right. So he's going to go and go get them. And then what ends up happening is that the attack comes. It's like, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening? Well, it's happening to you because you don't have enough word in the Lord be to speak against that attack when it comes. You got to have the word. So when it does come, you're like, oh, that is not of God, that is of the devil. You got to know the word. How do you get the word? By getting the word and putting it into your heart. Read it daily. Watching television of that comes, reading books, whatever the case may be, fellowshipping, somewhere, somehow, getting the word in place and instilled in you. And then when it does come, you have to believe it. Trust it. Even if you're not manifesting and walking in it, you have to know. So we understand this is that God is telling us, I need you to give all your cares, give all your blessings, give everything to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Because in the midst of you, as you're doing this, I'm telling you that the enemy is on his way to try to come and destroy you. He's coming to try to attack you. You know why the enemy comes to try to attack as much as he does on us? It's because we're going somewhere. Because God has something instilled and in place for us to receive. And he's going to do everything that he can to stop us from receiving. And if we bow down to it or we not detect it or done, we're going to fall. We can't allow that to happen. It says stand firm against stand firm against him and be strong in faith. Stand strong first. I am presented, I am here why this attack is coming, but I'm gonna stand firm because I know who you are, but I have enough faith in God, the one is the mighty man that's on me, that's going to help me defeat you. Because I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose. But the one that has defeated you is on my side. And since he's on my side, I can call on him and trust in him and say, he has already defeated you because you're not going to come up against me because he already defeated you. You don't want to see that. But you got to call on him. You got to stand firm and have enough faith in the one that has already defeated him. It says, and remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, I mean, in his kindness, God has called us to share in his eternal glory um, by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered for a little while, he will restore you, support you, and strengthen you. About to end this, about to end this. Watch this. Today is December 5th, 4th? Is it the 4th? 4th. Okay. Today is December 4th. We have until now, at the end of this month, to stand up strong, to hold on, and to recognize this is only a test. We're about to go into a new season. And God is calling us to say, stop playing around with situations that's already defeated. I need you to get this because God is about to take us into a new place. God is about to take us into new grounds. God is about to take us into new situations. And we cannot take these situations that we're going through today into next year. If you take these situations into next year, which you're going through this year, don't get upset and mad that you are going in the wilderness once again in a circle on situations that God has already said. Get up, move yourself, and go into your promise. These situations, they present themselves, yes. They are coming, yes. You can't escape it. You have to endure. You have to face it. God's word says, be alert. He's coming. Stand firm and have faith. Once you have showed yourself approved in these situations, 
God says he's going to restore you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to give you everything that you need. It's already given. You just have to go through the test part. We are being tested right now. We're being tested. And all of us have the tools, all of us have the instructions, and all of us have the almighty God on our side to help us pass it. There's no failing in this test unless you put yourself in the way and you fail because you didn't trust in God. It's time for us to start trusting. It's time for us to start believing. It's time for us to know who God is. God does not like to see us go through the things that we go through. It was so funny, and I'm about to end it. I heard one of my favorite pastors say this, and I've been using this all this week. He said, the Father is the author and the finisher of our faith. How many of y'all believe that? Everybody raise your hand if you actually believe that. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Watch this. God is not authorized to finish something he didn't start. If God didn't start something that is according to his will or what he said is in place in your heart, he is not authorized to finish it. He is authorized to finish what he started. That's why he said he that started a good works in you will finish. We have to understand that. Brother Jim, is he? Right now, we're about to go into our, our community part of the service. This word, and as I was reading, this is, this is your assignment. This word is for you to actually really go on and be dissected in your home. This word is for us to understand that God 